let's look at the larger trend. And I think everybody here would agree that there's a major climate crisis is already going on as we speak. It's not even like it's coming anymore. And every, all of us are feeling it. And racial and social inequality is also uh, fueling the huge, huge change in a society altogether. And that has implications. That has implications on corporates, that is implications on impact investments and philanthropy. And so all the traditional approaches that they've been doing are simply not working anymore. In fact, if you look at the corporates, many of you may have heard of this word, CSR. CSR stands for corporate social responsibility. But many people are also equating CSR equal to greenwashing or impact washing. I'm not sure you agree or not, but this is really the reality. And so, like it or not, many of the uh, well-intentioned businesses are right, starting to rethink what is the impact? What is the impact on the community? So if they are investing in the Midwest uh, United States, are they creating the right kind of job? Are they really stopping the migration to the West Coast? Are they really improving the real uh, work-life satisfactions altogether? Those are the questions they have. So they already know that they have been investing in the right places where the investment is needed in the under-invested community. But how can they show the evidence of the impact? So those are questions they typically struggle with, or they are working on a lot of community programs, volunteer and employee management program, and they want to demonstrate the impact altogether. Impact measurement or impact investment, on the other hand, is another unique challenge. Many of them are really coming from some of the top-down approach of managing impact. However, I'm here to say that those approaches are not working very well. And in fact, it has created more friction than solving the problem altogether. And so we want to also explain to you what is the best way to measure and manage the impact or for impact and asset manager cases. So few things that I would say is that if you are asset managers, focus on additionality and not the impact data aggregation of portfolio. And I'll be happy to explain in the details why I say so essentially, because we have seen time and time again, many asset managers aggregating data from their investments, but those data are inaccurate, difficult to benchmark, difficult to even make sense and aggregate them all together. Instead, they should be focusing on additionality. And secondly, most importantly, really focusing on the outcome-based approach and helping building capacity. And we'll show you exactly how you can really maximize the impact of your portfolio. But you have to work in a way that is very structured and very standardized altogether. And I'm here to explain the process today that is more uh, uh, workable. It can help you build your scalable platform uh, uh, portfolio and it does require you to build some structured process around impact experiments altogether. And finally, in a many monitoring revolution space or impact de international development space, one of the biggest barriers that has been that oftentimes funder demand some of the top-down framework. They often have a very large survey questions of household survey, and they make nonprofits or, or organizations on the partners on the ground collect those data, which hardly informs any impact decisions altogether. Instead, they should be creating culture of impact evidence and impact learning. And that's how they can improve the social return on investments because ultimately social return on investment is not a one number. It is a multi-dimensional aspect and it can only be collected through the continuous learning from the stakeholder uh, listening altogether. So again, it, the, ultimately, it's about making sure that the process is designed, which is quite nimble, very flexible, and still very continuous altogether. So let's look at where we are today. So in this webinar, we'll be talking about four things. Number one, I'm gonna be introducing a, a concept impact experiment. So I'll really very clearly define what impact experiment means and how you can really design the impact experience for yourself. Next, I'll be also giving you the best practices on the how to design the impact experiments. Third, I'm gonna give you an example of housing um, uh, and affordable housing program. 
And for I will walk you through a step-by-step -step process with a collaborative tool approach and the Impact Cloud, which is our flagship product on how can, we can streamline and reduce the time and continue to do the impact experiment on a very, very short period of time altogether. But before we do that, let's look at our current state of impact uh, measurement today. Today, I'm sure most of agree that it's a, most people think it's a complex. And I, I can't blame you because the reason is that people have not been really designing you know, with the right approach altogether. And I'm gonna to here to present this approach because what we see time and time, when we meet many of the nonprofits or social enterprises, how often have we seen theory change with 15 plus outcomes that often it's not achievable. And we have seen organizations spending months designing the theory change, which is practic impractical altogether. And ultimately it's very resource heavy. Uh, and to achieve that, it's just impractical for the most organizations. So let's start with what not to do. So here's an example. This is a theory of change that we designed in a, our platform called Impact Cloud. You can see on top. And I'm here to say, stop doing this thing. And I'm going to explain you why. Because ultimately, when you design such a complex and very heavy this was heavy uh, theory change. It's a first recipe of failure altogether. So what can you do which is different than traditional theory changes approach? And this is the most important uh, uh, recommendation I ever had. It's just to create a culture of continuous learning in your organizations. Instead of relying on external parties, Focus on a learning. And if we just apply some very simple principle, you can build approach which can be fast, nimble, and actually it will take you on a faster path to scale. So for example, if you're a social enterprise, typically social enterprise is a long cycle to become scalable. It can be 10 years, even 12 years, 15 years. If you apply this mechanism, I can guarantee you that within a four or five, six years, you are ready to start scaling your organizations. And that is really done because you are continuously driving shorter uh, uh, impact experiments altogether. Second, there is no difference between product market fit and the impact measurement management. Essentially, it's all about listening to stakeholders. When we work with the stakeholder and, and when you also talk to next, next uh, webinar with the uh, search on uh, Abelobi. The same, anybody who's focusing on building mobile app for stakeholders, for the agriculture, for the fishery, they have a major issues on actually make sure the stakeholder adapts their products. And that is the same issue as the product market feed as well as the impact measurement and management. And so there is no differences. So I'm here to say that the best way to scale your product and your mission is to listening to the stakeholders all together. And we'll show how to do that in an effective way. So there are many different ways of the, uh, collecting impact, which are short, but effective. And the key to that is to focus on immediate outcome. By, fo by focusing on long-term outcome, on outcomes that are not under control, you may end up wasting a lot of time trying to achieve that altogether. And I'm also here to say that you don't have to always create a very complex process altogether. Out Oftentimes, there may be an external research may be available. So let's say I have been, uh, I'm planning to introduce an alcohol uh, uh, prevention program in the Midwest, and I already have a research in Wisconsin that is proving that 15% of um, reduction in the uh, uh, alcohol-related death happens in the Midwest, Remember the context has to be very clear because I cannot use this research in somewhere in South Africa or uh, India altogether because the context has to be very similar to altogether. So in that case, that research is quite relevant to starting my business altogether. The next approach typically is to use stakeholder survey-based approach. And I'll spend a lot of time on that aspect uh, altogether. But fundamentally, stakeholder-based survey allows you to listen and learn from impact in a very, very quicker manner. 
I, I cannot stress you enough that I've worked with so many organizations. They end up building 70, 80 questions based survey and ultimately take so much time to collect the data. And those data create so much, has so much noise that it's even difficult to realize that there's the right kind of uh, uh, impact. Uh, and really more, more importantly, whether my product and service is in the right directions altogether. You can also ask simple questions. So oftentimes when you're starting, it's not even like you even have to create a survey. You can ask simple questions to the most important stakeholder and see what is the resistance to adapting that particular product or service altogether. And as you have identified right kind of stakeholder group, then you can start applying the stakeholder survey altogether. And finally, it's always important to find the causal uh, external output or testimony to collaborate with your stakeholder survey. The stakeholder survey can demonstrate the change that you are creating, but the causal uh, aspect, which is the external thing. So if I'm working in men and uh, uh, men and women, a girl uh, program, and there are men and uh, uh, young person program, I can definitely listen from their volunteers and students and other things, but at the same time, attendance or violence, school violence may be the more critical thing altogether. So very important to also cite the real evidence uh, that can also corroborate with your uh, outcome altogether. And this is the last sentence is very important. Impact experiment should be time bound. You must put time bound. You must put it in a two to four weeks. Now, first time around, it's gonna take some time, but over the period of time, things are gonna get easier and easier for you. And it's gonna be part of your culture. It's gonna be part of your structure that you do and you become part of norms to collect the data on a regular basis altogether. So uh, let's look at what impact experiment is. So as you can see, if you see the standard TOC, it has many, many outcomes altogether. What we are saying is that if you have to collect certain outcome, go ahead and do that because maybe your investors are requiring you to do it but focus on the most important primary outcome. And that is defined based on whatever the goal is. And I'm gonna show you how to slice and dice that. And based on that, you design the stakeholder survey aligned with impact management project, five dimensions of impact. And I'm gonna go more details into five dimensions of impact and have a mechanisms to automatically create a dashboards so that you can continuously learn about different aspects of the dimensions altogether. So what you are in a sense doing is very beautifully integrating uh, five dimensions of impact, which gives you multiple dimensions of uh, impact, but integrate that in a theory of change process altogether. So to do that, let me introduce some of the key dimensions. And this is a dimension that's been designed by a project called Impact Management Project. And many of you may be familiar with it, especially many of you are coming from impact investing background. However, um, this is not specific to impact measurement, impact investing at all. By using this approach, and there are 2000 uh, uh, impact practitioners have signed up to these programs and using this approach altogether. And the way it really works is that you really define the impact by five dimensions, which is what, what means, what is the change or what is the outcome you're creating? Who is the, who is the demographic? Who, who's benefiting most from your product or services? So it could be low income people, it could be racial, uh, gender, it could be ethnicity, income level may be different. So that is the who dimension. And sometimes you also want to apply who on what. By looking at who on what, you can save a lot of social return investment because it's possible that certain outcomes are achieved but on certain demographics than others altogether. And so by slicing and dicing those data, you can save immense amount of time and resources on how to uh, apply to the right community where it make, it's making a lot of change altogether. How much scale, depth, and duration of the impact? What is your contribution towards that and impact risk altogether? And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example later on. Se secondly, as I've been saying a lot, don't have very long survey. Keep it short, 15 questions, and make sure those questions are aligned towards five dimensions of impact. And I'll show you how the exercise that we'll do 
that will show how to do that together. Make sure that there are some appropriate open-ended questions because ultimately when somebody designed the survey, they designed the survey from their point of view, the, how what enterprise wants to listen. Instead, keep a room for your stakeholders because what they have in mind, it may be different than what you may have in mind. And that's why open-ended sentiment uh, questions can help you learn stakeholder sentiment. And obviously we'll talk about how to listen to it and how to analyze it using AI-based approach, but it's something that we, it's a very powerful concept to understand impact. One of the biggest challenge most organizations follow focus is that they have a very poor response rate. So it takes a long time to collect the data. And I hear this thing from almost every organization. So how do you improve response rates? And that is where the technology can help you, obviously. The platform like Impact Cloud has a ways to track every one of the responses to make sure that you get response much higher. This is the last thing is very important. Many organizations who are especially listening on a qualitative analysis, it's important to collect not only open-ended essays or uh, uh, surveys, or, uh, but have a process to translate and transformation analysis altogether. And finally, list but not, uh, one of the most important thing is to rule us to, if you have a system to collect, aggregate and analyze it, an automated way, your impact experiments become shorter and faster. If you don't have it, and if you have many, many tools that you're using for that, that process becomes longer and longer altogether. And as a result, it's difficult to follow through the process. So it's very important that there is an automation involved there altogether. So where can I use this approach? And by the way, I'd like to everybody who's on chat to pitch in because these are just few of the areas that you can use it. But I would like to hear, and maybe if you can write down in a chat, um, what are the most important areas for you where you can apply this kind of approach altogether? And this could be anything from birth equity, housing affordability, job creation, mental health, youth support, sustainable fishing, clean energy, product adoption, and waste management. I'm gonna pause here for 10 seconds and you can keep writing through the chat window, but please share your uh, journey. How, what are you really doing to uh, measure and manage the impact of your programs and what areas that you're focusing on? Okay. So that is the quick primer on impact uh, experiment. And we'll be sharing a lot of those learnings from many real social enterprises, nonprofits, and, and uh, asset managers in coming months. Uh, we have a video series is coming all together. But for you to understand today, I, I would like to walk you through a journey of an example that we have prepared for you to understand a little bit better. So this example is for affordable housing for uh, thriving communities. And it's a fictional program. It's not a real, we cannot share the client's data uh, in this particular case altogether. But uh, there, there, there are some example reports that we have uh, worked with some of the affordable housing programs throughout the United States. And I'll be happy to share a couple of uh, examples where a client has allowed us to share those report as well. But when you see you will see that how important it is to uh, design the program properly and how you can use that process to communicate even more effective basis altogether. And one of the big reason why we really focus on not only on the right strategy, but as you raise impact capital or as you raise the grants, the citing of your impact evidence is very critical to success of your uh, impact capital raising process, uh, grant process. Secondly, um, learning from impact is even more important because it helps you on a faster path to scale your social impact um, of your organizations. You're gonna be shortening your cycle from 10 to 12 years to uh, five to eight years altogether. 
And thirdly, powerful storytelling. So you have to explain that using very structured process. And we have designed learning management systems that helps you really design templatized based approach on how to communicate the impact in the most effective way altogether. So let's take this example and move, uh, walk you through the journey. Okay, so what is the problem that we are trying to solve? So we obviously have to start with the listing of all the different problems we are solving. And I'll show you the a template that will list some of the examples. It could be anywhere about um, focusing on um, financial uh, ability to manage the housing, some credit program management. It could be about reducing some of the gender uh, or, the, or, or it could be certain ethnicity um, participation. It could be about climate. It could be about reducing travel time as well. So there are many different, different goals you could be having as a housing program. So list them and we'll show you that there are some outcomes that are achievable, some of them not achievable. So focusing on achievable will help you. Next is to, let me introduce this fictitious program. So many of you may or may not be familiar with it is there is a, one of the most uh, uh, frequently used program uh, um, in United States. Uh, in outside the United States, people call place-based opportunity. In US, people call opportunity zone-based approach. So it's a Oakland, California-based company that's focusing on affordable housing in opportunity zone. And their main goal is to empower the underserved populations in black and Hispanic communities by providing dignified affordable housing. And the main goal is to aid the wealth building through the home ownership among those who were disadvantaged by systematic inequality. So if I were to list one problem statement, it has to be social and financial inequality in the housing market. And based on that, what we are trying to solve here is to increase the affordability of low-income Black and Hispanic communities. And that really means that this is the four main activities that is needed to be successful for that particular program. Number one, financial training. Number two, making home loans affordable. Number three, being a flexible with eligibility criteria through alternative processes and provide creative pricing for subsidized interest rates and flexible down payment options at no cost and cost. And fun, finally, the, uh, the outcomes that they're looking for is the increased stability and safety, economic growth through home ownership, improved accessibility to the public spaces that promote physical uh, well being, healthy community with high quality and modern housing and improvement in physical and mental health. So looking at this outcome, something should struck to you that many outcomes are well-intentioned. However, also many of them are not achievable by one organization per se. And here's where I really caution every one of you. As you may know that any, any mission driven approach, there are many, many externality that you have. And so identifying the externality that you can control or something that is dependent on some political reform or policy changes, that is something you want to really keep them separate altogether. You want to focus on something that you can introduce the most altogether. And what you can introduce most is these four different activities, financial training, making home affordable, by partnering with the right kind of a CDFI or some other bank uh, solutions and so on. And that is all you can focus on to make sure that your program and process of impact experiment are designed around that and not something that you cannot control altogether. Asking the question that is not relevant to what your outcome is, it's like a garbage in garbage out. It's really not really creating the right uh, information for you to really support your evidence altogether. So in order to support the evidence, we need to start dissecting those impact experiment. So there are three impact experiments, and I'm going to walk you through this journey very, very uh, clearly, which is really going to help you understand how you can design this process. So first thing we, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the process by which 
it is a very simple process, but very effective process by which you can clearly identify different experiments. And some experiment can be managed by you and some of them may not be managed by you. So if you look at traditional theory of change of impact, and this is the impact cloud, which is our flagship uh, platform. Um, this is the SaaS based platform that allows you to measure and manage the impact. And the first thing obviously you can do is design the strategy in this. Strategy designing means that you can design the template. Template could be out of box templates from after school programs to the affordable housing to education crisis. So these are all the many of the theory change which are publicly vetted by many of the program. As I was saying all along, do not design the theory change that is so complex altogether. Focus on the key outcomes. So even this one, you can see there are many, many outcomes that are packed in. Instead, if you, your focus is just on increase in stability and identifying the right output and activities, that may be the right design or approach that I would highly recommend altogether. But how do you really come up with this thing? Because, and this is a one area that we see many, many organizations tripping that they try to build very all inclusive theory of change, but ultimately that is there they start failing because many of those outcomes and outputs are simply not easy to measure or even do not inform the right information altogether. So to do that, obviously we help you design the right process through impact experiment step by step process. And next I will also show the building a strategy and strategy process will design around some of the report example I'll show you that you can really, the, one of the most important thing is to communicate the impact based on the dimensions of the program that you may be having. And I'll go more details on why it is necessary to communicate the impact based on the five dimensions of impact. But before we do that, let's step through this journey of the process. So for a typical um, housing program organizations, you may have multiple outcomes in mind. One could be stakeholder who make a stakeholders continue to own their home by following healthy financial habits, increase affordability and black Hispanic communities. And ultimately uh, that really is um, uh, the, maybe the first step. You could also have a outcome for reduced inequalities in home ownership, reduce intergenerational wealth building. Now, if you look at this kind of outcome, they are very nice to have, but they are often not easily controllable. So when you choose which outcome to pick, we always say, which is the most important outcome to the stakeholder? So stakeholders that you're focusing on, what, what is the priority for them? And so first of all, make sure you rank them by the priority that that stakeholder has. And then obviously define which activities you're gonna have. Can you control the outcome? So in, in this case of reduced inequality and home ownership, it is not possible to control because it depends on many of the policy changes in an Oakland area or in a California or even federal level altogether. So that's something, not something that I would put that as an immediate outcome to focus on. But this is something I can focus using these four activities altogether. Is outcome important to stakeholder? That's very important because you may be thinking so, but uh, the, the stakeholder may not be thinking the same way. So it's very important to get that validation or feedback from them as well. Are the stakeholders of, of that outcome reachable? Uh, again, it's all about continuously listening to them and see whether you can get very high quality uh, feedback loop. If they are not reachable, then you may want to make sure your sample size is more smaller and really talk to somebody on more one-on-one -on -one basis, for example. Uh, where are you gonna get the data to prove the evidence? Some data, for example, for the uh, racial, uh, for the ethnicity. So if you look at this example over here for Capital Plus Impact, this is the organization that's based in Texas. And their main goal is to focus on investing in disinvested community. And they focus on four different uh, communities in Texas. I'll show you. Uh, they focus on the San Antonio, Houston, Fort, Fort Worth, and Dallas. And, <clears throat> and you can see many of them are in a dense area where housing is so uh, difficult for them altogether. And many of the people who are coming, they're coming from the south of the border. So oftentimes, 
they don't have a um, they don't have a, a, a credit score, and so traditionally bank don't really lend them, and as a result they have to make sure they get the uh, banking from other alternative sources like CDFI or other banking altogether. So when we design the process, this is a step number one, which is really to help them define their framework that align towards five dimensions of impact. So it could be who, what, how much contribution and risk. And for each of them, we define key indicators. So for example, in case of who, we have target stakeholders, target stakeholder demographic, socioeconomic target stakeholder, socioeconomic female, low income. Same with the with the what the one of the most important indica uh, the indicator is the increased resilience to step safety and stability. Stability is more important because it's difficult to achieve both of them at once essentially. So focus on stability is the first major work of first couple of years, and that was the main goal altogether. And obviously, you learn about how much uh, scale depth of the impact you are creating, what is your contribution, and what is the risk um, of not su supporting. Maybe in this case, COVID nineteen was the risk. Uh, that we had to understand uh, from the residents altogether. So how do we go about doing it? And what did we learn from the process? That's important. And so, as I was saying earlier, that they already have a loan management systems. That's where we collected data. And they, we found a lot of things which is surprising by aggregating those data. First of all, 97% of the minorities. So that's not un unusual. What was unusual where we thought that there's gonna be high participation of female, instead it was 35%. So there's a lot of room to improve here. Secondly, we thought many of them were underserved. In reality, there are only 23 who are underserved. What was really truth was that they were mostly were underbanked, not the underserved altogether. And this is the first <coughs> recognition or realization that <coughs> um, the Capital Plus had as a result of collecting data from the loan management system. Next, we did stakeholder survey with those 15 questions. And I'm gonna show you the example on how to design those stakeholder questions. Obviously those questions were in a Spanish language because most of the speak, uh, 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 residents were Spanish speaking. So as you can see these examples, these are the 15, the 20 questions that we designed and we aligned them with the couple of things. One is the dimensions, which is who, what, how much in contribution and the risk. That's important because when I designed the dashboard after that, it's important to see how to slice and dice those results based on multiple dimensions and all together. Secondly, if you want to demonstrate the change that you're creating in a community, it's important to make sure that you create a, what we call as a longitudinal approach, which is really make sure you design the experiment with the baseline, midline, and exit line. So and depending on your timeline and horizon in which you can collect the data, you can define the approach so that you can see the change that you're making. Because ultimately the goal is to understand the outcome of your, uh, your, uh, your, your residents, measure them by key areas like safety, stability, mental wellness, and socialize, and track them over the period of time. Now this is an aggregated result, but the real value comes in when you compare that with multiple, um, the uh, who aspect, which is you look at the results by Hispanic, for example, or we look at the results by Af African-American or Caucasian, you will find the giant change essentially in, in certain um, ethnicity, certain things are improving significantly, whereas in certain areas, things may not improve as much as you like altogether. So very important that you combine your who dimensions with what outcomes that you are creating and learn from that because this is the, perhaps the most important way to improve social return on investment because this way you will be focusing on the area that is most relevant and most uh, outcome generating than anything else altogether. So very important not only to get the evidence but improve your program effectiveness over the period of time altogether. So that is what we learned from this uh, who aspect of it. And obviously what would be the outcome uh, that in this case is about stability, 64.9% uh, agrees with that, uh, that they are meeting the expectations, how much um, uh, change that the CDFI is creating for them. 
and ultimately uh, other aspects like contribution to sustainable development goal and other elements altogether. So this is the purpose, because one thing that is very clear that if you want to scale impact, not only you have to be continuously learning, but you can communicate better, not just simply testimony and storytelling part of it. Obviously storytelling is very, very critical and important, but more than storytelling, what is important is to telling your story with an effective impact evidence. And, it, and when you do that, uh, nobody's gonna deny your numbers essentially. And that's the best way to create your communication strategy and raise the capital based on that. And we'll, we can help you on how to design those effective reporting aspect of it. We have many different examples of the uh, impact reports, but ultimately we help you in a way that you can document alignment with different standards, documenting activity, short-term outcomes, medium term outcomes, documenting essentially uh, your learnings, impact learnings based on different dimensions. Um, and that's really what the code of uh, what is what investors and funders are looking for. And so impact evidence is the way you can really measure and manage the, uh, communicate the impact very well. So I hope this process of this stakeholder survey was useful. I'm gonna now uh, shift to, and so that was basically you can collect the data from multiple sources. And I'm gonna show how impact cloud can be useful in collecting and managing the data. So the step number one, in impact cloud is to design the theory of change. And as I said, create a very short, small and nimble theory change. So it always starts by designing the theory change with the impact statement. As you design it, you also make sure that you can export your theory change or you can share your theory change with the public or to funders using the email addresses. So collaborating with your funders is critical in the process. Next, you need to make sure that you design that in, uh, the strategy that is quite aligned with the common thing. So the example here we have is that, what is the impact statement? So what is the problem we are trying to solve? So if we provide high quality affordable homes and low uh, medium income groups and minority by constructing building opportunity zones access uh, to amenities and modern design, then uh, occupants will have thriving urban community and ultimately reduce systematic inequality through the wealth building and improved financial well-being. And that helps you understand the impact, that helps you understand outcome, outputs, activities, and inputs. As you do that, you want to make sure that you align some of those outcomes with the metrics, which are commonly known, maybe from IRIS, from GIN, from STG, from World Bank, um, and, and you name it, there are more than 50 metrics catalog each of them aligned towards uh, sustainable development goal, or you can start searching um, for any metrics using any search keyword and find those metrics. So you can use any of the standard metrics. You can use frameworks like RDS Plus as well, or you can also create your own custom metrics in any language you want. Make sure you align those metrics with a sustainable development goal. And ultimately that becomes your framework where you measure. Again, Simple rule, do not go overboard. Keep it very simple, focus on the outcome that is most relevant to the stakeholder. And if you do so, you are sure to get a good guarantee of success of impact learning process. So this is step number one. And it shouldn't take more than a few uh, hours to do that, essentially. Once you design that thing over here in the uh, uh, process, what you're gonna do is essentially simply gonna translate that into the impact learning. Next, you design the data collection and aggregation process. So let's say, and you can have as many number of programs you want. So for housing, I have a program where I can design the, the different kind of service. One could be resident survey and another could be sustainability housing checklist. And so you design that, that, that uh, survey right over here. So just import that survey right here. And we have a different ways you can collect the data. So if you are working in a developing country, uh, you can use Kobo Toolbox. Uh, many of you may be familiar with the Kobo Toolbox. It's an offline data management tool that allows you to collect data even if you don't have internet altogether. And so you collect the data in a very trustable manner and you have data coming to your systems altogether. 
or if you are on a developed countries like US, Europe, you can send out the survey. And not only we have a inbuilt in survey, you can use your own survey as well. But more importantly, you are in position to track higher level of response rate using our uh, traceability or tracker essentially, because that is key. Because when you are sending survey to many, many sources, you want to make sure that you have a mechanisms to see whether who has completed, not completed, you can remind them. And that way you can increase your response rate altogether. Obviously you can do AI based qualitative analysis. You can do longitudinal survey. You can integrate with survey CTO or you can track the results over the period of time using longitudinal survey uh, uh, approach that we have altogether, which allows you to make sure that you don't really ask the question uh, like demographics again and again and again, that that reduces the burden on data collection side of it. As data gets collected, your systems automatically calculates those results. At the same time, you have automatic dashboard getting created for your programs altogether. So as you build the dashboard, as I said, there are a few things which is very, very important. Number one is communicating with your funders. Make sure your funder has complete and transparent availability. And you can also share this dashboard, not only with the dashboard, but there's a filters that is possible. And that is, that's very important because other example that I showed. So here is the um, learning they can do here. For example, you can see here that 85% of them were living uh, in the apartment, but they were where they had a very unstable uh, past essentially because they were moving from one place to other because they did not have a stable housing capability altogether. Uh, obviously, here we are showing that we are uh, improving the results on a female participant. First time ownership, you can see that most of them are first time owner, obviously, which is uh, not surprising. What is interesting here is that this, thing, this question is very interesting. So do you have ancestor or parental property? And you can see this example by different uh, properties in an Oakland area. So Rogers, Samit, Terry, these are different property names. And for each of them, you can see by certain demographics, and you can see very clearly that if you look at the results by Caucasian, then many of them had a past um, uh, inherited some from past uh, the, the, uh, altogether. But if you look at the Hispanic or the Afri Afri African American, many of them did not inherit uh, except for this one property altogether. So that tells you that the the focusing on certain segment which are really deprived of those kind of past uh, history may be the right strategy that you may want to focus altogether. And so that's that slicing and dicing really allows you to really adjust your strategy um, as long as you collect the right data. Here also you can see this example, this is a baseline where when the property started, 90, 9, 20, about 20% of them were Blacks and 36% uh, uh, were Caucasian. And then ultimately there was a uh, ultimate focus on really mobilizing the community and bring this number up from 19.57% to 37% altogether. And that kind of learning, without learning from here to applying to the uh, right intervention, you're not gonna be able to in systematically create a change or improve the process altogether. Obviously you can apply these results um, to multiple dimensions like what, who, how much, and um, ultimately uh, focusing on the results that can help you with this thing. Uh, on, on the other hand, on the right hand side, you can see importance of learning from stakeholders as I was saying, learning from qualitative uh, um, aspect is extremely important. So it's make sure that you include open-ended questions and analyze the sentiment from those people because what you can learn from those open-ended question can be even much more powerful than simply the quantitative data that you're collecting all together. So make sure that every dimension has some form of um, open-ended questions so that you can really learn uh, effectively from them all together. And obviously you can, uh, summarize those results of the outcome and share those results with your um, funders altogether. So I hope this 
uh, example was able to clearly communicate. Um, I would be happy to share this presentation with you so that you can uh, go on your own face and learn uh, uh, how we design the impact experiments, um, uh, how we uh, design the stakeholder survey and how you can use data to measure and manage the impact of your programs altogether and communicate the impact to the, your funders in an effective manner. Happy to share these details. I am gonna uh, stop here and ask my team, um, Lorena Madhu, if, if there are any questions um, that, that we should really be answering them. I know you must be answering them online as we speak. So, but Lorena Madhu, can you uh, please, um, uh, maybe do you want to address some questions? Yes, Unmesh. I think um, I think one one question that uh, it was like sort of a common theme, uh, and uh, one of the one of the attendees in the webinar asked is uh, so. And let me read that question out so every everyone actually understands. Uh, so obviously, I mean, since Unmesh, you mentioned that it is difficult to link evidence to one's specific action. And impact tends to be, you know, longer term. Uh, how can you know they run realistic impact experiments and also ensure that you know stakeholders continue uh, to experience those that impact? And also, how do you bring that culture of uh, impact experiments within organizations? This is this is this has been like one of the one of the questions that uh, some of the some of the attendees asked. Uh, just to answer that question, I think. See any organization that that we work with, they always have a long term goal, right? Like everybody has uh, this big long term goal. Maybe it's a five year goal, maybe it's a ten year goal. But we always try. See five and ten year goals. You you cannot measure them on day one. It's impossible. So the impact experiments that Unmesh was explaining is basically breaking down that bigger goal into smaller chewable chunks that you can incrementally measure that will ultimately help you answer that five or the 10 year long-term goal that you have. And this is how like effective organizations actually measure the impact uh, that they have on their stakeholders in the, in the long term. There's no other way. Like if, if on day one, if we have, as Unmesh mentioned, 20 outcomes, there's no practical way to measure 20 outcomes. Like you can, you can debate, you can discuss. There is absolutely no practical way to measure 20 outcomes on day one. If there is, we'd like to understand and maybe implement it in our programs. Uh, in our experience, uh, one, maybe two outcomes at any given point in time, and they should be those, those bigger questions that you want to understand uh, from your stakeholders at any given point in time, and very, very consciously collect data only on those two, the, you know, the, the data that helps you answer those two questions. If you don't do that, you just you know, collect noise, and it doesn't help you uh, measure the real impact. I, I hope that answers that question. And there was there was one more question, and I was really uh, intrigued by that question. Someone asked, like, how do you really identify who your stakeholders are? Uh, well, I mean, to be very honest uh, in answering this question, uh, the the question on stakeholders uh, has to be the first thing that any organization uh, thinks about, even before they roll out the service. Uh, to me. Uh, if an organization has rolled out a service and one year down the line, they're asking like, who are our stakeholders? Uh, then that would be like the biggest priority for the organization to understand because like without understanding your stakeholders, what services uh, is the organization even delivering? So that's, that's a very, very important uh, actually point. And I feel that is the point that should be discussed more and more in, in the boardrooms rather than, the big bang 15 20 outcomes that you want to that you may want to measure i don't know if anybody wants to add something on me yeah um i, I want to remind you we are coming close to an hour we'll continue uh, because there are many of you are still around and i want to remind you all that this is a, a series designed for you to learn and you will see in coming webinars and many videos we'll be sharing this is coming, coming from the real 
enterprises and real learning altogether. So I hope uh, you will find them useful. If you have any feedback for us, please share your feedback on the chat window or by email. You can email me directly at unmeshatsopak.com or join our LinkedIn um, uh, uh, SOPAC channel and you will, uh, we can really part, participate and collaborate uh, together all together. But this is the journey that we are all taking together all, to, uh, all together. And so I hope at least today's session was useful in introducing the topic, impact experiments. There is a blog on our website that clearly explains how this can be done in a more effective way. So please listen, read that blog as well and how to maximize social return on investment altogether. Um, but um, so I really encourage you to do that. Uh, Lorena, any other uh, questions that you want to raise or you heard that really particularly interested you? Yeah, so I think we also got uh, quite a few questions about um, using different tools to collect data, qualitative and quantitative data, and if those are um, can be connected to the to Impact Cloud to just bring everything together. So, uh, yeah, do you want to answer? I'm so sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so there were questions about the ability to use different tools to collect okay. qualitative yeah. and quantitative so, data uh -huh, and bring in, it In reality, data. there are many hundreds of tools out there. And uh, one thing you have seen consistently is that 95 or 98% of people are using spreadsheet-based approach to measure and manage the data. Um, and they use different kinds of tools for visualization, Tableau or Power BI, and so many other ones altogether, or Airtable for that matter. All of them are fine to a certain extent, but if you want to continue to learn and improve, it is most organizations struggle through that process because it really takes a long time to design the strategy, collect the data and um, aggregate those results because a lot of the time it can be in many different languages uh, or even track the results over the period of time, longitudinal approach. So there is uh, no single tool that does that today. Um, we have developed obviously Impact Cloud uh, that does all inclusive approach of uh, comprehensive uh, impact measurement management approach, but it is a very different problem statement than most of the tools that are already out there. And so if your goal is to string your time, it takes to measure and manage, you need a purpose built tool or platform which can do everything in a very seamless manner altogether. Any other question? Uh, there is, uh, uh, sorry, Madhu, do you want to ask something? No, I mean, um, I, I, I mean, if there are more questions, we can, we can take them. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. Yeah, there, there, there is just one last question that I, that I found here, um, someone asked right now, and I find it very, very interesting. Because they're saying, um, what about showing impact within a larger community? Because here we're talking about mining outcomes, um, but then how do you show the, 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 the impact across the community? So I think um, when, when we are talking about mining outcomes, uh, one outcome could also be um, benefiting or affecting different type of stakeholders. And we also want to consider that uh, sometimes if it, like one program that uh, Unmesh was mentioning, we have um, worked with uh, boys, for example, to for them to uh, get skills on healthy masculinity. But that doesn't mean that we are just going to uh, stick to collecting data from the boys because that wouldn't give us the full um, dimension of the outcome. We're also going to collect data from the parents and the teachers and the um, advisors working with, the, with these kids. Um, and at that, when collecting this data, we can also include you know, different dimensions of what that impact means across the whole community. So when we're saying focusing on one outcome, um, we're just trying to uh, be more specific on exactly what is it 
that, that we want as a change. So for example, in this case, we just want to see boys expressing healthy masculinity. But that itself, it's already, you know, a, a big scope. We, we have to consider multiple stakeholders. We have to collect data from multiple places. And that's why we don't want to uh, attack five or six outcomes at the same time, because they are all just as, as complex. So we're going to go and uh, get some data about this outcome. And then once we have some data and we have established the process of data collection and all of that, we can come back and see uh, what are the outcomes are uh, important and then attack that second outcome. Um, because some, some organizations are very complex that they might have an outcome related to environmental uh, benefits and then also helping fishers and then also helping the market itself um, with uh, supply and demand. And, you know, the, the idea is don't try to measure all of them at once because each individual outcome is going to be complex enough. So, um, I think, I hope this, this addresses the part that at the end, we are showing the impact across the community, but for one specific outcome. Thank you, uh, Lorna. Thank you, Madhu Etel. Um, this is an amazing, I'm just so struck by the fact that so many people are still stuck around after the hour. So I'm sure you must have found this thing useful, but please continue to, uh, drive the conversations. Let's really do this thing right. Uh, the system change is very important. And that's why we want to make sure that we apply the right approach. So please uh, uh, st uh, listening, uh, tune in to our future learning video series as well as the webinar series altogether. And thank you so much for your time today.